Hello, everybody, and welcome to Watch Your Story. We have a very interesting guest for you this hour. Her name is Jane Wareham, and Jane is a speaker and a transformational coach and a certified life coach and a mindset coach. And I think she coaches on everything that has to do with believing in ourselves, which is super, super important. And Jane is one of those speakers that's going to be on the program with me at Women Thrive in March of next year. And uh, I'm really honored to be accepted for that. And I know she is too. We were very fortunate to be selected. Jane, welcome. Glad to have you here. Thank you so much, Judy. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for that warm welcome. And I'm grateful that we connected through Women Thrive. So thank you again for having me. Yes, I am too. Um, you are fascinating. I was reading your bio and there's so much fascinating about you, but it seems to have uh, uh, everything to do with mindset and how important mindset is to having a really good life. Um, so I wanted to ask you, you said your mindset is the key to unlocking the life you truly desire. So what do you mean by that? Absolutely. Well, I learned something many years ago about the true power of the mind. And where mindset really comes into place is that starting to believe that anything is possible for you. And if you can create it in your mind, if you can see it in your imagination, then it's possible. And this isn't always easy for everyone to believe. And it can take a lot of time and practice and working with coaches and so forth to understand this. But really what it comes down to is the belief systems that you have. And once you truly believe that you are worthy and deserving of, let's say, a happy and fulfilling life, then it's truly possible for you. Yes, I believe it is truly possible. A lot of people don't believe that. They they don't think it's possible for them. But, you know, uh, those are usually people who have not been brought up in a positive attitude, uh, uh, atmosphere. They uh, perhaps haven't read all the books that we've read. You know, uh, my dad was a salesman. So from the time I was a young girl, I was reading these positive mental attitude books because that's what he had to do to stay positive and out there on the road. Have you read a lot of, of of self-help positive mental attitude books? I have to say, I definitely fall into a bit of the self-help junkie category. Absolutely. Um, yes, I believe in constant growth. Knowledge is power. You know, the mind is very powerful and knowledge is power. But I do believe that we need to remember when we are reading, say, self-help books, um, oh my gosh, The Mountain Is You. There's so many authors that I absolutely, absolutely love. Um, but one thing I think that's really important to remember is the application of what we're learning. So I think that's what the key difference is between someone that reads a self-help book, applies what they're learning, that actually starts to see the results happen in their life, versus I was victim to this too. I used to do this too, consistently trying to absorb more and more and more information, thinking the more you know, the better you'll be. Which, sure, but if you're not actually putting anything into place, taking action, or I like to say inspired action, if you're not doing that, well, then, you know, the results may, you may not get the results that you want. But yes, I absolutely, similar to your father and what he instilled in you, self-help books are absolutely, can be amazing. It's just important to apply what you're learning. Yes, they are. Now, reflecting on your journey, what life experiences have shaped, have shaped the person that you are today? Yeah, so as I really reflected back on my journey, and I've been doing a lot of this in the last few years, I'm doing a little bit more soul searching. Something that's really interesting that a lot of people don't really know about me is I have a twin sister. So I've got a twin sister. So I always grew up with a second person by my side. I mean, we were child number three and four. So four kids in my family. But one thing that's really interesting is my parents always instilled in us that we are two separate people. Now, we are not identical, but, you know, whenever you say you have a twin, everyone's questions are, do you think the same? You're the same person. So we are very different. But what was really interesting is my parents always truly instilled that individuality with both of us and always encouraged us to pursue our own passions. And I think back because I look at some of my own personal values and I think, that's really interesting. Can even down to no joke, our bedroom. 
the wall was coated in one color and then my parents let us each sponge paint this kind of says when i grew up sponge paint over top with our own colors so we had one room split in half two separate colors but this is really interesting because i can start to see that individuality that independence and then and freedom too but what's also as i as i think about some other experiences that i had I really consistently sought out happiness at no, at really at no expense. I was like unapologetically seeking my own happiness. And that can be really challenging because sometimes the happy road is not the easy road. And sometimes it's making those really hard choices. So really another really instrumental and like influential part of my life is that I had a career in project management. And I did that for 16 years. And I realized about eight years in, I was like, okay, so I've got this amazing job. I'm making the money that I dreamed about. I'm taking three plus vacations a year, like really living the life that when I graduated university, I was like, this is it. Like when I hit this, this is it. But I was stressed. I was overwhelmed. I wasn't even happy. I felt a lack of fulfillment. And I was thinking, okay, what the heck here, right? What's going on? I achieved everything I wanted, but it's really not getting to, I'm not really feeling that fulfillment. So then I, in that moment, I knew that like something really needed to change. And that's really where I saw a connection between core values and your happiness really. And in what you're doing in life and the choices that you make, because what I started to identify was that my core values in my early 20s no longer aligned to the core values in my late 20s. So in my early 20s, of course, you're money hungry. I mean, I still love money, but you know, you <laughs> want to achieve that success. You're chasing that career. But then I was like, you know what? I got there. And like I said, I wasn't really happy. So I started to make some choices. And at that time, another great moment for me was I quit my job. I sold all my things. I was 29 and I traveled around the world for a couple of years. Now, one more thing about the core values was that I realized when I was traveling, so living my best life, honestly, on my beaches, beautiful beaches, traveling around the world. But what was interesting is that there was a point when I kind of lost that sense of fulfillment. And I started to realize that like, okay, I'm missing some fulfillment. I'm missing some belonging. And I noticed that I was seeking external validation. I was seeking almost an escape to be happy when really happiness has to come from within. Yeah. So that's kind of kind of my mission now for the last few years is okay. I identified that, you know, seven, eight years ago. And now I'm on a mission to help others see that sure, those other things are nice. They're nice add-ons, but really like happiness comes from within. Yes, it certainly does. And with these core values, uh, the core values that you have, how does that affect the impact you have on the world? Yeah, absolutely. So some of my key core values, now, you know, I'm preaching happiness. I talk a lot about happiness. So it so happens happiness is one of my core values. And it's not everyone's because we're all different. But some of mine, just as an example, that lead some of my decisions that I make are free, our freedom, independence, adventure, well-being, and happiness. So something that's really interesting with core values is they're really like a guiding light. So they're really just a guiding light for me. And where I start to notice where my things don't really align is if I feel that resistance. Do you ever feel that? You know, you have that resistance towards doing something, but you're not sure why. Well, usually it comes down now. We don't all have the know-how to be like, hmm, what's my core value? Does this align? But I think it's as you reflect backwards and you start to think about moments in your life that you felt that resistance. And usually for me, it's when it goes against a core value. But as it relates to the impact I want to make. So I know that I am just like everyone else. Sure, I have my own unique skills and abilities. But what's possible for me is possible for anyone. So really, with happiness being one of my core values, sure, it may not be yours, Judy. It may not be your top three or five. But I'm 
I believe that everyone is worthy and deserving of a happy life. And why would we sell ourselves short? Like the why, right? Why wouldn't you want to live a happy and fulfilling life? So really, and like you touched on before with mindset, this is where it really comes into play because oftentimes we feel that maybe you're not deserving of this happy and fulfilling life. Maybe it's just not meant for you. But the power of the mind is a very interesting thing. And I can say as well that when you think about mindset, and as I as I make this impact on others in the world and anyone listening today, something to remember here is that mindset doesn't change the situation you're in. It changes your the way you react to that situation. It changes the way you see that situation. So the impact really I'm looking to make is even if right now, like you mentioned before, Judy, that sometimes your surroundings are making you believe something else. I'm here today and want to share that even if you're unhappy in your surroundings, you're worthy of happiness. You're deserving of it. And by just making this shift in your perspective, even the slightest shift to see a glimmer of light, if you can see the smallest glimmer of light at the end of your tunnel, that's enough to really start making your way, finding your momentum towards a happier life. So really, you know, it's those shifts in perspective that I'm really hoping to make a positive impact on. Yes, in fact, uh, Dr. Viktor Frankl wrote in his book, A Man's Search for Meaning. He was a, he was a Holocaust victim and, mm -hmm. and he was there and he said that even in those circumstances of being in a concentration camp, that you have the power to choose the way you look at it and the power to choose the way you're going to deal with it. And uh, I love that book. I've read it a million times and I recommend it to everyone because it really helps you take a, a look at what your mindset is, doesn't it? 100%. Yeah. And that is a brilliant example. I am very familiar with that as well. And that story like of him even just writing the, oh man, that story in the Holocaust is just truly inspiring. If someone thinks that they are in a not good situation right now, that will maybe humble you a little bit. It could be worse, couldn't it? It could be a yeah, lot worse. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of people are suffering from a lack of confidence, uh, a lack of motivation. I And I'm finding that as I grow older, my friends who are older seem to be losing their confidence instead of gaining it. What's that all about? And what can they do about it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is something that I see with every client I work with. Absolutely every single client, they come to me and they're like, I feel I'm not feeling confident. I'm feeling low energy. I have no motivation. What is wrong with me, right? So some of the key challenges, like some other, I'm going to talk about a couple challenges that I really see and I'll give some solutions on how you can overcome that because really I'm looking to help here, you know? So one of the things that I see where we lose motivation is where you have a lack of organization. So when I say lack of organization, I feel like I, I'm saying it as if life is very hectic, stressful. Maybe you feel you've got a never ending to-do list and there's never enough time. I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that type of life. Now, when you have a lack of organization, so if you're trying to build motivation, build confidence, maybe you're that's probably in some aspect of your life. So maybe let's take health and wellness as an example. You're looking to build your confidence. You want to start moving your body more. Maybe you're from the era that you believe you should be on a diet and be doing a lot of exercise. So you start adding more to your plate. Well, that becomes very overwhelming if you're already overwhelmed. So one of the strategies on overcoming this like feeling lack of organization is creating order in your mind first. So what I like to do with my clients is say less is more. So if you're in, a, if you're listening right now, watching this and you're feeling the stress and overwhelm, you're feeling there's not enough time in the day. Remember, okay, less is more. Let's do a little audit of our schedule. Let's do an audit of your day. Where is your energy going? Right. And then something as well, I think is great to think about is, okay, if you were more organized, if you were more confident, what would you be thinking? What would you be doing? And so start doing some of the things that maybe that type of person would do. Maybe they'll organize their calendar. Maybe they'll prioritize time for them, right? So these are some ways in which you can start creating some order. 
I think another major reason why people start to feel low confidence and lack of motivation is they're believing an old story about themselves. Now, this could be a whole episode in itself, so I'll try to keep this one brief for you, Judy. But really what it comes down to is when I say you're believing an old story about yourself. So maybe in your past, you behaved in a certain way, right? Maybe you always lacked motivation. Maybe you often lacked motivation. Maybe you found you had a lot of highs and lows in your life. Maybe you never felt confident. Like you could be any age and never really feel confident. The thing is, you don't have to believe that. It's hard not to, but you can start working towards creating a new story for yourself. So this all starts and with working through, you got to think about some of your self-talk. How are you talking to yourself? Is it in a negative way? And then start thinking, okay, how can I surround myself with more people that are going to uplift me, right? How can I get myself out of this headspace, which can be very challenging? And, you know, how can you do that? And I think as well is when you're when you're starting to focus on rewriting your story. So every day we can we have a choice. Every day you have a choice. You can believe an old story or you can start to rewrite a new one. And what this really comes down to is who do you want to be? And this is one question I ask my clients a lot. Who do you want to be? What do you want in life? What do you dream about? We our biggest limitation is our mind, really. Mm -hmm. So it's like, who do you want to be? And then, okay, great. This is who you want to be. This is your dream. Beautiful. Amazing. I see this for you. So if you had that, what would you be thinking? How would you be feeling? And then taking action. What is some inspired action? And so by really reframing this, this helps my clients. This can help anyone listening right now. If you're like, wow, interesting help you take the driver's seat in your life. So a last challenge is really where we're taking the back seat in our lives and you only have one life. So it's time to get in the driver's seat, right? Decide on, think about what you want. Think about what you dream about, write it out. You don't need to tell it to anyone. Just put it out there, put it out into the universe, write it down. And then as you put those ideas into your mind, you can start taking action on them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what about visualization? Um, does it help if they get clear pictures or they post pictures around places? Yes. So what I find is everyone's different. So, you know, um, I've worked with coaches myself that visualization works very well for them. Sometimes for certain people, you might close your eyes and really struggle. Maybe you see nothing, right? So everyone's a little bit different and it's all about not being afraid to try something new. So if you're open to trying, you can do guided visualizations. You could, what I had to start doing, like I have some guided things that I started in the, in the beginning. And so sometimes visualizations can work really well. And what this does is it gets you into the, you're seeing what you want. So you're seeing mm -hmm. what's possible for you. Although I, what I personally do is journal. So every single day I journal and I write and I write out. Now, as I'm writing, I am visualizing some of those things for sure. But personally, I find journaling, writing out my goals and my dreams every single day um, really works for me. Oh, I find it works very, very well. I have a friend here in, in Las Vegas that's an entertainer and he writes his goals he, has, he keeps 10 goals in front of him, and he writes those 10 goals 10 times every day. He rewrites them out word for word 10 times every day. And he said by doing that, he keeps it in the forefront of his mind, and he's always concentrating on it and knowing where he's going. And as a speaker, um, he's he's at that $20,000 level, and he's working you know four or five days a week. So I'm saying this must work. If, it, if oh. he does it this way and he's got all this success, it works. 100%. And I can tell you with my experience as well is I have a goal. I write a goal and then I follow that with I am statements. So this is claiming what I am in that goal. So similar to the gentleman you just mentioned, I might write out 15 I am statements or 10 I am statements very similar every day. And if I really like what I wrote the day before, I'll just copy it again. Because really, like you said, 
It's reminding yourself of what you want, getting into the headspace like you already have it. And this can be really challenging concept to understand if you're hearing this for the first time, but it really works. You want to believe you already have your goal and start acting from that frame of mind. Again, easier said than done, but repetition is an amazing way to do it. It is. It's absolutely amazing. So um, to, to create a more meaningful and fulfilling life, um, what can people do? They, they can write their goal. They can visualize it. They can take action on it. What else should they be doing? I think the number one thing, so those are great as well. I think the number one thing is to remember that happiness comes from within. So it's truly about reconnecting with yourself. And that can be challenging. It's hard to look within, get a little bit vulnerable with yourself. But that I think is the most important thing. So remember that your happiness and fulfillment comes from within. So when you start to reconnect with your passions, reconnect with your dreams. And when I say passions and dreams and joys, I mean, as simple as what puts a smile on your face? What puts a smile on your face? You know, sometimes even reflecting back to what we liked in childhood, things that you enjoyed as a child, as adults, we kind of lose that playfulness. Yeah. I know personally, I'm a little no nonsense, so I'm not quite so silly. And so I know that I can get caught up in that seriousness. So remembering to reconnect with that. I think then once you've reconnected with what brings you joy, so you've got a list of things that bring you joy, then think, how can I add a variation of this, some small aspect of this into my daily life? So for me personally, being out in nature brings me a lot of joy, brings me a lot of peace and calm, which is what I really love in life. So I tried to get out even today. I only had time for less than 30 minute walk. After this, I'll be getting outside um, for a walk down by the waterfront. So incorporating some of those joys, even for five minutes into your day, very, very, very important and will really help. I think making time for you. So we make so much time for everyone else. We prioritize most things above ourselves. I believe making time for yourself is just as important as doing your job. So whatever your job is, if you're blocking time for your job, block time for yourself. And it doesn't necessarily have to be every day. If you can spare five minutes a day, amazing, but at least a couple times a week. So making time for yourself is key. Having an open mind. So like you said, you know, we both very well read. We, we do self-help. So open your mind to a different perspective. Open your mind to the fact, if you're in a situation right now that you're very unhappy, open your mind to the fact that there is a better way and there is a happier life ahead of you. So just having, like I said, that glimmer of hope is the beginning. Um, and then I think two last things are really finding a community. So I mean, think about the people you're surrounding yourself with, right? You're even, this can be challenging with, if you've got a core group of friends, but they are really not fostering your mindset growth, let's say, if they're not fostering that and uplifting you, but instead I call them dream killers, you know, they're, they're, you're telling, you're sharing your dreams and they're knocking them down. So really try to find communities that are flooded on Facebook. You know, you've got an amazing community. I build communities. So find a community that's going to support you. And then as well, what I find beneficial is working with a coach. Like I work with a coach. <laughs> I truly believe in it. It's how we get ahead. It's how I break through my limiting beliefs. I've got fears. I've got doubts. Those things come up every day. But, you know, it's like having the tools and that support to work through it. Yeah, I work with the coach as well. And I very often have people say to me, why do you work with the coach? You are a coach, you know, but but it's so important to have someone outside of myself that can see objectively what I'm dealing with and say, well, what do you think about this? Or what do you think about that? And make me think differently because it, I, I believe having a coach is one of the most important things we can do in the world. I, I fully agree. And I think as well as, as coaches ourselves, you know, we, we understand the value in it. Like we, we see the value. There's so much personal growth. I agree with you. I've made leaps and bounds having a coach because I do need help to work through my own, my own things. We all do. So I think it's really important and great to see that, you know, you've had the same success with coaches. 
And, and the other thing that's interesting to me is as we live our life, as we get older, we go through different phases of life. And so the people who are around us, like you were saying a minute ago, they may be really good for one phase of our life, but as the life changes, they may not be good for the next phase. And sometimes we hang on to people too long. People who are negative or, or they do kill our dreams, we'll hang on to them too long. And, and I think there comes a point where you have to say enough and you release them and you move on. You don't have to be unkind, but you just have, do you feel the same way about that? Oh, one thought. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it can be really challenging when one of those people is like in a very tight circle of yours, you know, and that can be very challenging. And I think as well, like, like I said before, we have a choice. And so I like to say when things aren't a match to me anymore, it's not about saying to this person, you're not a match to me anymore. I just think like a nice natural distancing. So I just selectively choose how much energy I'll give this person and in what types of settings. So maybe it's more in a group setting that I'll see them versus giving one-on-one -on -one time because I know that their energy brings me down and it's not exactly the type of energy I want to be around. So I totally agree. And I think it's important to assess who your circle is because they absolutely will hold you back. They totally will. And, you know, for, for you and I and the communities that we're in and how we met, like, the positivity of those circles makes you truly feel unstoppable. Exactly. I mean, look, I'm here with you now. I'm like, this is amazing. These are dreams coming true right here, right now. Yeah, this is a really wonderful group, Women Thrive. I've, uh, I felt so honored to be a part of it because all of the women are so different and yet they're so positive and they're making a difference in the world. And I just feel like this summit that's coming up in March is going to be such an incredible experience that every woman I know should be a part of it. No doubt. I am so inspired by everyone. Like you said, we're all we're all different, but we're cut from the same cloth almost, you know, and it's just it's so inspirational and it's just such a blessing to be a part of it. And I totally agree that every every woman out there that wants to feel inspired and empowered definitely should come and we'll be definitely sharing more information on that when it gets closer to the event yes we will share a lot more information um and talking about sharing information let's tell uh, my audience how they can get in touch with you in case they're interested in having you work with them in some way as a coach or um however you know have you speak to their group or whatever let's tell them how to get in touch with you yeah, absolutely. So you can check out some of my services on my website, which is www.momentumbyjane.ca. We'll share the link with them as well, I'm sure. Yes. And um, so on there, you can see information about coaching packages that I have, as well as um, workshops and speaking opportunities. So I work with corporations, I come in and I do public speaking and workshops that focus around mindset. Um, so those two different, two new ways and exciting news. I haven't even really announced this to anyone, but I'm going to be launching a podcast this month. So that's oh, going to be really, really exciting. Um, so that's going to launch in about 21 days. Um, so I'll be having a podcast as well. And the option too, as well, it's going to be the Jane Warren podcast. And I'm very active on Instagram. So it's just my name, nice and easy, Jane Wareham. So you can find me on there reach out, send me a DM. I like love to hear from my community. And if any way that I can support you, I'm truly just trying to, you know, create as much happy and fulfilling lives as possible. Yeah, well, you you certainly are a charming person. And, and I really appreciate you being on my show. Thank you for being here today. And we will remind the audience by putting it on the screen how they can get in touch with you and follow up with you on Instagram and, and your other addresses. So take care of yourself. Thank you for this interview. It's been my pleasure to have you as a guest. And I hope to see you again soon. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining us today. We certainly appreciate it. And we hope you'll be back with us next week for another one of my fabulous guests. Thank you. Thank you.